Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Millennium Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight, and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa. Building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. Potential is the story of the moment and it's going to be for years to come. But all eyes are on agriculture and agribusiness to leverage the continent and its people to a whole new level. So what should global companies with a footprint in Africa do to ensure sustainable and profitable yields for farmers? We're going to go from Abidjan right here into Ivory Coast and into Burkina Faso to find out. Ivory Coast produces 40% of the world's cocoa. Most of it's grown by small-scale farmers whose beans are taken to Abidjan and then exported via the city's bustling port to chocolate producers around the world. We're going to follow the beans back to their source, travelling northwest from Abidjan to Ganwa to meet a cocoa farmer and see how Arista Life Science a global yield enhancement and crop protection agribusiness is engaging with farmers on safety and sustainable production. Je suis Beibro Luku Alfred. Je suis ici avec euh, mon épouse. J'ai six enfants, trois garçons, trois filles, trois qui vont à l'école et trois autres qui sont encore petits qui n'ont pas encore l'âge d'aller à l'école. Bon, j'ai commencé ma parcelle de cacao depuis 1988, quand j'ai quitté l'école. J'ai deux hectares et demi sur lequel je suis, je, j'ai fait euh, de, des anciens pieds de cacao. Maintenant, les insectes aussi, si on ne les traite pas, on, on va perdre au moins 40 à 50 % de notre production. Donc, on ne, si on ne traite pas de produits phyto, nous sommes perdus. Bon, euh, aujourd'hui, nous avons la présence euh, dans la cacaoyère, les, la présence des myrides, des fourreurs, de, les boureurs et des punaises vertes qui nous fatiguent en, à, pendant certaines périodes. Actuellement, euh, nous avons un programme avec euh, nos partenaires qui viennent nous donner, nous apporter des, des produits pour pouvoir traiter ces parcelles-là. Arista's technical advisor, Alicia Lengro, and I joined Bahibro and his helper, who were checking cocoa pods for diseases. They look if there is some black pod disease on the field, and you see there is some. So they will make the treatment with fungicide. You know, it's so interesting that these are farmers, they're they're small-scale farmers. There's no insurance, there's no crop insurance for this. So if you have this kind of disease, it's down to the wire because it means that you can't feed your family. You know, it's make or break. My name's John Street. I'm head of global stewardship and regulatory compliance for Arista Life Science. The company's been present in this region for many, many years, and we've established businesses um, in Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso that have been very successful. And since we started here, we've had a very close engagement with the farmer. Arista's business model is a little bit different to that of conventional companies operating in this business area. We like to really understand the grower's needs and get close to the farmer and understand what his problems are and then we try and find a solution based on uh, the products we have in our portfolio, which may be conventional products or they may be biosolutions. Our products are thoroughly tested to ensure that they can be used safely in these uh, environments. 
We develop labels that are targeted at meeting the specific uh, grower needs uh, and we provide safety instructions for their use which will enable him to treat all of the pests and diseases uh, that he has uh, but most importantly to improve the efficiency uh, of, of production for him and that leads to a better income for the grower in the longer term. My name is Jessica Antista, I'm the Regional Program Manager for TechnoServe's work in West Africa cocoa. There's about 800,000 cocoa farmers in Cote d'Ivoire. Our goal is to help those farmers make more money. While there's increasing demand all over the world for chocolate, and especially specialty chocolate, developing countries like China, where chocolate used to be a, a luxury product, but now more and more people can afford it. Countries like uh, in Europe and in the US, where higher percentage uh, cocoa chocolate is, is more in demand. Um, there's a great market opportunity, but a lot of that money is not getting back to the farmers themselves. So there's potential, there's huge potential. But if farmers are expanding their yield, what does it really mean? We know they can be earning more money. On average, Ivoirian cocoa farmers are only producing about 400 kilograms per hectare from their cocoa farms. But we know that up to two tons is possible. So in theory, they could increase their yields and increase their earnings 500%. One of the big reasons is that traditionally cocoa farmers have not used crop protection products. And so when they grow their cocoa, they may lose up to 80% uh, due to pests and diseases. TechnoServe and Arista have been working together now. This is our fifth year in Cote d'Ivoire, um, working to help cocoa farmers get access to crop protection products. So one of the things that we've worked with Arista on is making sure that farmers are properly trained and we did a study from farmers who had been in the program for the first four years, and what we found was that within two years, the average farmer that participated in the program was able to increase their yields by 50%. Crop protection uh, stewardship is really about taking responsible care. So it's not just about selling products, it's about making sure that they're manufactured, stored and used safely. It really starts with research where we uh, investigate the properties of the um, products uh, and we conduct preliminary risk assessments and this carries all the way through manufacturing, storage, uh, into the field uh, and then eventually through container management and disposal. Stewardship is about using products safely to get the maximum benefit out of them without damaging human health or the environment in the process. But that really isn't enough. We go beyond that to actually uh, train the farmer how to use them uh, in the best way possible. But it's not only about wearing protective clothing. Stewardship is also about training farmers how to read labels and use the correct spraying techniques, nozzles and calibration so they don't overspray and overspend, getting the maximum benefit from the product and ensuring the sustainability of their land. We believe in doing business in a sustainable way. We believe in establishing good partnerships between ourselves and growers and grower groups in order that both parties benefit in the longer term. And we find that uh, we have new customers coming to us for help and advice and that enables them to reap the benefit of the programs that we're, we're currently uh, uh, are promoting in the region. In my experience, these uh, training programs in, in, enhance the farmer's knowledge of, of Arista and they respond very, very positively. So it's not just about selling products today, it's about building a relationship with our customers so that they will continue to buy from us in the future. And the best way of doing that is making sure that we're delivering tangible benefits for them that improve the quality of their life. Well, it's important for the life of the applicator. Himself. Donc si tu n'as pas de protection, tu t'exposes à ces matières actives. Là. Donc c'est pour cela qu'il faut porter tout l'arsenal de traitement. Souvent les enfants ont peur quand ils te voient, qu'ils te prennent pour un masque. 
Donc, mais avec le temps, ils sont habitués. Papa vient, c'est papa, bon, ok, et puis ça passe. Most people, it's funny, they, they don't think when they bite into a chocolate bar what the journey has been um, to get that cocoa bean from, from a farm somewhere in a remote West Africa um, into a final product that they're, that they're consuming. It's one of many um, industries in Africa where there's, there's a relatively small amount of the value getting back to the farmers themselves um, that are growing the product, and that's one thing that we're working to change. We're working so that the farmers themselves are capturing more of that value in their pocket so that they can send their children to school and make better lives for themselves. Donc si j'ai assez d'argent pour m'occuper de mes enfants, pour construire une maison pour moi, acheter une voiture, rouler comme tout le monde, ça là me fait plaisir. Donc s'il y a une bonne qualité de cacao et si ma production s'augmente, cela permettra de suivre mes enfants à l'école pour que demain si je suis âgé et que je peux plus travailler, ces enfants qui sont allés à l'école s'ils ont abouti à, à, des, à un travail, puis s'occuper de moi en retour. It's been fascinating exploring the cocoa industry through the eyes of farmers and Aristas trainers to feel how stewardship can really make a difference to the lives of farmers. And now we're on our way to the airport in Abidjan, to fly to Bobo Diou Lasso and continue our journey in Burkina Faso. the Yield Enhancer program in action with cocoa farmers in Ivory Coast, and we're about to land in Burkina Faso to find out what Arista Life Science is doing there to help cotton and maize farmers increase their productivity. Cotton is central to the economy here, with almost 20% of the population living directly or indirectly from its harvests. Local farmers call it white gold, which stands to reason because cash from a good crop allows them to dramatically improve their standard of living. We're on the road from Bobo to Ouagadougou to meet a farmer by the name of Francis Milogo. Uh, he's typical of the area, farms cotton and maize, and uh, yeah, it's just it's beautiful. Francis's farm is in Lena, about an hour and a half's drive from Bobo. Like the cocoa farmers in Ivory Coast, farmers here don't have large tracts of land or insurance for a bad harvest. But Francis is progressing well, determined to improve the quality of life for his two wives and five children. When we arrived, his wives were making shea butter from the seeds of the karate trees on their farmland, near to the village where they live. La plus grosse difficulté, c'est la mauvaise répartition des pluies dues au poste de sécheresse qui font que lorsqu'on sème, ça ne peut pas pousser. Il y a des coupures de pluie. Et puis si on sème aussi, il y a des insectes aussi qui viennent détruire. J'ai commencé à travailler avec Arissa Safito grâce à la Sobtesse qui était notre partenaire puisque j'étais producteur de coton. Et moi, personnellement, j'ai suivi deux campagnes successives avec le programme renforcé Arissa Safito avec la Sofitex. Nous étions les premiers à bénéficier de cette action sur le terrain. Moi, personnellement, ça m'a beaucoup aidé. Je sais comment je peux mieux réussir maintenant dans mes travaux champêtres. Traoré Karim, je suis le président de l'Union nationale des producteurs de coton de Burkina Faso. Bon, je, on peut dire qu'au Burkina Faso, pour le moment, le Burkina Faso est leader en production cotonnière en Afrique. Nous avons pour la campagne 2013-2014 une production de à peu près 700 000 tonnes. Le cotonnier est très très sensible pour des ravageurs. 
Donc il nous faut des insecticides pour nous permettre de pouvoir gérer ces lavandeurs-là. Donc aujourd'hui, en tout cas, avec la Sovetex, en partenariat avec Arista Safito, nous voyons que la production de plus, devient de plus en plus facile. Je m'appelle Serge Sama. Je suis responsable recherche et développement au niveau de la Société africaine des produits phytosanitaires. Le programme renforcé est une action qui a été mise en place pratiquement en 2012. Au niveau de Safito, au moins deux fois par mois, donc nous faisons des sorties terrain pour rencontrer les producteurs, pour s'assurer que le travail est bien fait et de les conseiller en cas de besoin. Voilà, je le conseille donc sur les herbicides qu'il faut pour justement contrôler les mauvaises herbes et aussi de s'assurer que les traitements insecticides ont été appliqués quand il faut. When I see a farmer like Francis in Burkina Faso, I just realize uh, what it is possible to achieve. Um, seeing him apply using all the correct processes that he's been trained, the right protective clothing, uh, uh, gl glasses, gloves, going through the right procedures, um, and uh, hearing his stories of the yield that he, in benefit that he's been able to achieve as a consequence of following our programs. Partnership means a win-win for both parties. Francis benefits, uh, and we benefit from his continued business. It's developing a sustainable uh, business model for both parties. There's a very big debate these days around food safety. But the other side of the coin is food security. If we look at the numbers that the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN has produced, we're looking at something like two billion more mouths to feed by the year 2050. Now, how can we do that? We could put more land into production, but that involves chopping down forests and creates other problems. Or we could try and farm the land that we've got more efficiently to increase the yield. There's a huge potential on agriculture in Africa still untapped. Uh, if the expansion of agriculture is done in a way that's driven by increases in productivity, and especially land productivity, this would generate jobs on the farm, off the farm, would bring uh, uh, food prices down, would release more income, that would then be uh, able to drive more uh, uh, businesses. So agriculture is one area where I think there's a lot of potential. Satisfait, satisfait donc de suivre les producteurs et de les conseiller parce qu'ils ne comprennent pas toujours ce qu'il faut pour que justement les cultures se comportent bien. Alors quand on leur donne des explications, ils comprennent et moi je ne peux être que satisfait. Je suis satisfait parce que au niveau rendement, on s'est rendu compte qu'il y a une nette amélioration parce que certains producteurs ont pratiquement pu doubler le rendement. Donc je pense que ça c'est vraiment à saluer. I care a lot about sustainability. It's good for everybody. If we're not doing things that are sustainable, then we don't really have a future. We're certainly not not in this business uh, for the short term. My company is in this business for the long term and we want to develop sustainable solutions. Building on the stewardship that trainers like Serge are delivering, Arista Life Science has taken its commitment to sustainability and farmer safety to a new level with the Applique BN program. A fully kitted truck enables Stefan and his assistant Abu Bakar to provide stewardship training to thousands more farmers in the remotest areas of Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso. Applique BN launched in Brazil in 2007 and is now recognized as a worldwide reference for research in agrochemicals application. Mm -hmm. 
la lecture de l'étiquette. Oui. On a pu leur montrer un peu la différence entre les produits homologués et les produits non homologués. Donc là, oui. on puisse leur permettre de faire la différence. Quoi. Voilà. Okay. Donc là, on va tout droit comme ça. We traveled back to Abidjan and inland to the capital Yamasukro to join Stefan and Abu Bakr on one of their training adventures. That day they were going to meet up with farmers from a rice co-op adjacent to the city's famous basilica. Je suis euh, Kofi Kwame Stéphane, je suis euh, ingénieur des techniques agricoles euh, à Arista. Je travaille en tant que responsable de l'unité de formation. Donc avec le, le programme Applique Bien, avec la tech mobile, nous partons au contact des producteurs directement. Ce qui fait la spécificité de ce programme, c'est que nous avons mis l'accent sur euh, la pratique. I'd like to show you these slides and this is some research that was done looking at the efficiency of uh, application of crop protection products um, and these are water sensitive papers that were placed at the top of the crop, at the middle of the crop and at the bottom of the crop and these blue spots represent the water droplets that actually hits the crop. In this first one which is at the top of the crop you can see there's quite large droplets and it's quite well covered looking at the middle of the crop, a lot less uh, spray solution is actually hitting the leaves. And if we look at the bottom, there's virtually nothing. Point being? The point being that you're not actually controlling the pests throughout the crop. Lorsque les, les producteurs ne sont pas formés, euh, souvent on constate dans la plupart du temps qu'il y a du gaspillage des produits. Et si il y a du gaspillage de produits sur l'utilisation des produits phytosanitaires, c'est de l'argent que le producteur paie. Et ça va se répercuter sur les rendements. Si on a les rendements bas, ça va se répercuter aussi sur la vie sociale, le bien-être du producteur et le bien-être de sa famille. Donc c'est comme s'il y avait une perte. Donc sans ces formations, le producteur est livré à lui-même. Ils sont donc livrés à eux-mêmes et peuvent subir n'importe quel type de désagrément. J'apprécie vraiment euh, ce que je fais, surtout euh, le côté euh, pratique. Euh, C'est vrai que je suis formateur, mais souvent les producteurs nous remontent certaines informations qui sont vraiment importantes pour pouvoir euh, améliorer la formation. I've got specific experience in some parts of the world where families have been able to send their children to school because they no longer have to have the children helping them on the farm. And I think that's a significant advance, it really is. And uh, that's the sort of thing we want to achieve here with our efforts in West Africa, to enable the farmers uh, to uh, have more disposable income, to rely a bit less on hand labor and uh, improve their quality of life. Moi, en tout cas, ça m'a permis de faire beaucoup de choses. J'ai pu payer mes intrants à comptant, ce que j'utilise présentement. J'ai payé de nouveaux portables pour mes femmes. Ça m'a permis aussi de payer la scolarité de mes enfants. Et j'ai même payé un nouveau bureau de labo. Donc, ça m'a permis beaucoup de choses. Et j'ai épargné un peu quelque chose encore à la caisse pour la santé de la famille. We travelled thousands of kilometres through Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso to experience stewardship in action with Arista Life Science and its partners. We've seen hands-on training at farmer cooperatives and outdoor classrooms and visited farmers in their fields. And it's good to know that Stefan and Abu Bakr are setting off for Burkina Faso so that more and more growers in West Africa will be using crop protection products safely and efficiently and enjoying the benefits of healthy, sustainable yields. One, two, three. The grand soleil, I've quitted my country. Without my father, my mother, 